time. They trailed 26 0 at Wigan two weeks ago in the 2004 Tri Nations final here. They were 38 0 down at half time, 44 0 down in the 43rd minute. Darren Lockyer's 50th Australian cap, and he leads the team once again here tonight. His next try will be the 34th for the Kangaroos. It's his 29th appearance as the Australian captain. Leon Williamson is the referee from New Zealand, in charge of England, France in Doncaster, France, Australia last week, and he was in charge of the 2004 Women's World Cup final. This is a step up in class for Leon Williamson. England expects and Kevin Sinfield will get this game underway in just a few seconds time. England in white, attacking the green and goals, running from right to left. Here we go! Lockyer is underneath the kickoff. Hammond will drive it in! He takes Morley off his feet, but Adrian Morley stood his ground. He made the impact, and that's all that counts. England realised they have got to get into the faces of this Australian and boy, you could see the twinging arm from Morley. Remember a few years ago, only 13 seconds or something like that, he found himself given the red card. Boy, that was a very dodgy start. There's Morley though, working very hard at the marker. He brings Cameron Smith down. This, this is, so, is Marsh now. This is so important, Eddie, that the emotion and the tension, it has to be controlled. England's defence has to stand solid. Not have one or two just going out of the line. They've got to make it go up as a full unit. The kick from Thurston straight into the arms of Sean Briscoe. The Hulkingston Rovers fullback brings it forward to the 30-metre line for England. That was Sinfield. This is Peter Fox. Eddie, that's a good start for England. They've taken possession and they're up almost on the halfway line. When they last played Australia, it was over 10 minutes before they got the ball into a good position of the field. Such was the way that Australia strangled England, England close to their own try line. Sinfield again turns it to the right hand side and Morley gets England over halfway on tackle number four. Struggles to his feet and the first penalty for interference at the right going against the Australians. England happy to slow Australia down when they can, and Australia going like for like, but they are testing the referee very early here, both sides. Well, it was a silly penalty giveaway, wasn't it? Giving a facial to Adrian Morley there on the ground. Now then, will England just do two drives and then maybe leave it up to Sinfield? He has to control this game. He knows it. He's in there at dummy half. He was named this week as the international loose forward of the year. This is Kyle Good job that Nathan Hindmarsh just got his ankles. It's Sinfield again. Now it's with Sam Burgess. And Burgess gets England to within three metres on the third tackle. Sinfield once more, it's another penalty. Hands in at the rock. Interference, says Leon Williamson, the New Zealand referee. I take the tap. The Australians are struggling. I wouldn't go for the two. Nothing is being sent out by Tony Smith, and I think this is the right way to do it. Apply that pressure, we could get over very early in this game. It's with Morley, and he's greeted with the talons of Luke Lewis. And Sinfield waits the dummy half. He fires the pass, it's Tompkins. And Tompkins goes down under the challenge from Ben Hammond. Now it is with Eastman. Eastman pops the ball up. Peacock will run at them again. Good tackle, low down by Luke Lewis. Sinfield. Back on the inside, Burgess! Australian all hands to the punch here in defence. England camped underneath the Hands Kangaroos' out. post. Sinfield stabs the kick in! It's grounded in goal. Grounded in goal by Billy Sweater. Just got that in time before the youngster Sam Tompkins got there. Very neat little kick. Was it intended by Sinfield? I think it was. It was sensational there by Slater. And look at Eastman, look at the step there. The power goes through. Had to say, Hindmarsh just clicked his ankles at the most okay. important moment. Early days, but a promising start. Graham to run it back for the English. Oh, head went back there. Paul Gallen did not miss. Sinfield waits the dummy half. Here is Peacock again. And on the end of so much heartbreak has uh, Jamie Peacock against the Australians over the years. So has Morley. 
Interesting to see there, Eddie. That's a third inside short pass that England's come up with. Scampering run from Sinfield. Finds Gareth Ellis. He gets the ball away. This is Michael Shenton. That's the fourth tackle, shouts Leon Williamson, the referee. Sinfield at dummy half. It's Tompkins. Tompkins fires the pass to Eastman. Eastman then flat and finds Peacock. Peacock spinning but goes down heavily in the challenge. Last one for England. Sinfield finds Briscoe. Briscoe gets the ball away and there's no way through for Chris Bridge. That's the turnover right on the Australian line though. I want to see now how the referee judges this rock when the uh, English are trying to control it. He blew up the Australians very, very quickly and we want to see who's going to apply the same rules now to the English defenders. Shouted quickly then and he says to Jamie Peacock he wants him off quicker. See the Australians, they want to get on with the game very quickly there. Good little run there from Cameron Smith. He's a danger man. They've got to make sure England get their first and second markers sorted out. That's a penalty, can... ah, yes. He was always coming. Chris Bridge. He, uh, he conceded three penalties against New Zealand last week. He was the most penalised English player, and he was all over the top of Cameron Smith on that occasion. The thing about that is that's going to suit the Australian, this mobile pack, a lot more than will suit the English. The English will want to employ spoiling tactics and slow it down. If the referee's going to blow very quickly, I think that's going to favour the Australians. Here they come with Petro Sivanasiva. He gets it infield to Ben Hammond. Look how far Locke he'll be hanging. He'll be so deep. He'll want the ball. It's with Thurston, now it's with Hindmarsh. England quickly to Two. Nathan Hindmarsh Two. on the second tackle, but they're Not 20 the metres away from the England line. Here is Cameron Smith. Showed it to Sivanasiva. Gave it in the end to Billy Slater. This is the danger area, that left-hand side for Australia. He loses it, though, Slater. Oh, the ball was stolen, says Leon Williamson. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. They look confused. Singfield says, are you sure? I think he just lost control of it. Here's Hannant again. Gets a great offload into Thurston. Here is Luke Lewis. This is Hodges. Paul stood his ground, but it's with Lockyer. And Lockyer is cut into the deck by Gareth Ellis. Lockyer will play it. That was Lewis. Thurston, high marsh. England now defending desperately. Cameron Smith once more. Trapped on. Peacock missed him. There were reinforcements there for England. Three tackles gone, they're two metres away. Thurston changes the direction of the attack. That's a great hit. The ball went backwards, though. Luke Lewis pounces on the loose ball. Then he lost his forward. That's play on. Great hit on Darren Lockett. Was it ever? This one's a ball, it went backwards. And it's Michael Shenton. Tremendous stuff. Letting the genius Darren Lockyer settle on the ball in the opening Two. moments. When well, you can attack your opponents even back, when they have possession, and England are showing that a willingness to move up quickly. Okay, they've taken some chances with the defensive error, but tremendous Two. commitment and desire to close down the ball. Early kick this time from Sinfield. Yes, they did this. A great one. A lot of the time during the game against New Zealand last week, which uh, paid dividends. They won 20 points to 12 to qualify for this. But these are the Australians they're taking on here. It's a great tackle Ooh. by Ryan Hall, though, and it was on Brett Morris. It has to be as well, and it just shows you that the Australians quite capable and Two. willing Bruce. to keep this ball alive way down in their own half. Slater, the dummy half. Here is Sivanus Siva. Burgess Two. got to Two. him. Two. Graham was there. Back there, back there. Hold. So Two. too was Adrian Morley. Smith again. Hindmarsh on the charge, on his shoulder. Well, Australia very often on the fourth tackle will kick Hold. deep into the white, left white, corner white. as they look, they'll want to trap Fox back. This time to continue with the ball, but again, a handling error by the Kangaroos. Oh, but the Kangaroos have got the ball back somehow. Surely that's a knock-on, isn't it? Well, it wasn't, no, it came off the knee. And he just couldn't tuck it in there. James Graham, it went right underneath his body, came off the knee. Fair play then to Leon Williamson. Got that one right, here is Sivan Siva. Look for a moment as though England had uh, closed the door on them, that the danger had gone. Australia, though, in possession here with Cameron Smith. He misses Gra Graham, misses him. This is Lewis. Shenton doesn't miss him. Cameron Smith at dummy half. An attack down the short side. Hodges. Here is Morris. Oh, he's over the line, surely. This could be no try. Big decision coming up for Phil Bentham, video referee. I think he's got it down, though. Oh, beautiful quick hands. I think he's got the 
Briscoe. Briscoe's done everything he can. I think he might have, might have knocked him out. No, no. that's a try. Okay. That was a wonderful finish. Or has he lost the ball there? No, I think he's got it down there. There's the out. Oh! That ball's come out. That ball has come out. Looks a little loose there, all right. It just... certainly does, but I thought the forearm maybe had just got it down. Oh, it's going to be a big call here. Phil Bentham is the video referee. I think he loses control of this ball as it comes down there. Oh, it's hard to say. It really is difficult. Has he got the thumb? Has he got the fingertips on it? That's all he needs to have it. There's no worries about whether he touched the white ones, because he doesn't. It is a big call for Phil Bentham. Well, I think he's lost that, but Phil Bentham is the important man. What does he say? Big call, this. No try! England breathe a sigh of relief. He dropped the ball. And credit Sean Briscoe for his effort in defence there. That, that's huge from a full-back covering. And to hit him that hard that he dislodges the ball and makes it difficult for him to put down. Tremendous effort from the full-back. Phil Bentham, the video referee, but he's being watched very carefully tonight. Part of the arrangement to have Leon Williamson in the middle and Phil Bentham as the video referee is that the international ref of the year, Shane Hayne, is acting as an observer alongside Phil Bentham, the video referee here tonight. And well, it, that is fair enough. Yeah, it, it, it has to be expected as well. There's so much pressure on this game. But as we've already mentioned, Briscoe really did put his body on the line there. But it just shows you that this... Australian side, they don't want a forward battle. They want to keep it zipping out wide. They've got the quality. Burgess on the break. Burgess, oh, brilliant try for Sam Burgess. From one end of the field to the other, England thought they might have conceded. And Sam Burgess, whose reputation in this four nations is growing minute by minute. He will be playing. says, I'm sorry, Mr. Morris, you can't get it. That is wonderful stepping from such a big man. And what about the confidence of the dummy? He had Sam Tompkins on the inside. All you people down in Australia, this is a young kid that's going to be a star, no doubt about it. He already is a wonder star here in England, and he has given England the star that they needed. Superb stuff. 20 years of age, Sam Burgess. He's winning his seventh cap. He signs off from the British game tonight. He wants to go out in style. And Kevin Sinfield here to notch his 20th international goal for England. It's 6-0 to England. Terry! Well, Eddie, what do you say about the first five minutes about this? The way that this England side have started, they took it to the Aussies in the middle of the park. They've been under pressure to give a couple of penalties away. Sean Briscoe come up with a tremendous tackle in the corner. But the mentality of this English side tonight, they want to take this Aussie side up the middle and none better than Sam Burgess. Two appearances against Australia for Sam Burgess. Two tries against Australia for Sam Burgess. And Not a all, bad start. And it all came about by there's something that we expected from the Australians, which was a quick play the ball. Sinfield got it out. This is going out of the ball. Oh, this is a disaster for the Greenland goals. Well, that kickoff from Cameron Smith, it was in row C of the stand behind the posts. Great call from Tompkins and Graham. Let it go. Well, we often Let's go down to Bill. Is it a bit breezy down? I remember being here at uh, Ellen Road in uh, World Club Challenge games when the wind has been swirling around. It's a really open and there's lots of little nooks and nooks and crannies in this stand. The wind channels through them and it's very difficult to gauge exactly which way the wind is blowing as uh, Cameron Smith discovered there. And here now is Billy Slater. This is their favourite child, that left-hand side. Cameron Smith. Oh, well, 
England were in if he got the ball away to Sam Tompkins, Sam Burgess. Now they're camped on their own line. And this is Paul Gallon. He was goes a... down, tackle oh. number three. That was a golden opportunity to make it 12, and they know it. Thurston again. Thurston, back it comes to Lockyer. He gets the ball away to Lewis. Well done, Tompkins and Shenton. They keep him out. Justin Hodges. Lockyer flicks the pass. Siva to Siva. Down he goes. Burgess low down. Tompkins over the top. Cameron Smith. They come down the short side. Quick hands. He's in this time, Morris. Morris is in this time. From one end of the field to the other, it goes. First it was England. Now it's Australia. And Burgess just slipped the pass to Tompkins. It could have been 12 0. As it is, it's 6-4 England in the kick to come. And it's Brett Morris with the try. His fifth try, the leading try scorer in this tournament. And he could have had two already tonight, but he's only got the one. Oh, we really should have had it. And it was the pass there from Graham. Thurston read it well, but look how well we got back. Tremendous stuff, got there in numbers. But quick hands yet again. He was denied a few moments ago. But Morris, Brett Morris puts Australia back in this game. What about the flick on? Top quality. Star. Hodges' touch was just enough for Morris to sneak in at the corner. But everybody at this ground, they realize it should have been 12 0. Yeah, yeah. Burgess, the hero for a moment, made the break. He had the youngster Sam Tompkins on his shoulder and he decided to go for glory and this man eventually came up with the intercept and it has put Australia back into the game Sam Burgess the adrenaline must have been flowing he could see the headlines being written in the morning I think he may have considered Sam Tompkins was covered and when we get to look at that again later Australia's defense said he was working hard to try save in that position I think there were probably bodies closing in quickly on Tompkins and Burgess took another option. It was a split-second decision. And at the other end of the field, Australia come up with the four points. And Thurston, with 32,000 people trying to put him off, lines up this conversion attempt. He's kicked it. It's a great kick from Thurston. Six all back. Eddie, there's no doubt this game's going to be the, like, the team that takes the chances. We can't be too harsh on Sam Burgess. He does it once, he gets it right. He does it the second time, and again, I agree with Phil. I think Sam Tompkins was covered. But that's the transition that Australia have got. They can turn attack into defence, and likewise, England have just got to find out the nail that's sticking out the most and hammer it. Well, on the second and third look at that, I think Tompkins might just have got in. Oh, he'd have got in for easy, no doubt about it at all, and he realised it. Oh, it hasn't it been a good 15 minutes of, the, of final football? This is what we wanted to see, end to end. Australia, just when you think they look vulnerable, boom, other end of the field, and they get a try. Oh, they're so dangerous. Even 18-0 up with 10 minutes to go, you wouldn't say that England were home and hosed. Just over a quarter of an hour gone, six apiece in the Gillette Four Nations final. Hindmarsh is grounded on halfway for the Kangaroos. He'll play it to Cameron Smith. Here's Ben Hannant. Hannant taking them on. Sinfield stood his ground. It's important that Australia really do get their forwards working hard. Even their coach, Tim Sheens, realises that they really have not been in top form. That's a shocker. It's sliced, it's gone backwards. Oh, that's worse! Eastman didn't take it in, and it's a gift for Darren Lockyer. You cannot give away territory to the Australians like that. I mean, an awful kick, and they get another set of six. Cameron Smith. England must defend now as though their lives depend on it. This is Sivanasiva. That's a penalty. That's a penalty, referee. He shouted three times, play it. Well, I think with the noise of this crowd, he's saying that uh, I didn't hear you, but... Actually, I don't know whether he was tackled. No, I mean, we could hear it clearly on the referee's microphone up here, but that, that's difficult. You'd have to say Petro Sivnasiva would have played that had he heard the referee. You know that Carl Eastman's pretty relieved here as he got it, went to get his hands on the ball as soon as the penalty was awarded. Well, I think that uh, Peacock lost him, and that's why the big fella 
from the receiver who uh, also becomes the most capped forward for Australia, beats the great Johnny Raper. This will be his uh, 40th appearance in the green and gold. And it's a wonderful effort for a prop forward. Yes, Johnny Raper, 1959 to 1968, Petro Sivan 40th cap here tonight in 2009. Another penalty for England here, offside. And that's what you need to do, get the dummy half in running, get them on the back foot, and you might get rewards like that. Well done, Michael Shenton. We need to just have a little bit more composure now, don't rush things down. We got a little bit excited with the fact that uh, they made the second break, remember. This is where we've got to pile the pressure. And even if we don't get over the line with the first set of six, we want to try to get a second set. This is James Graham for England on the first tackle. It's Kevin Sinfield who's at dummy half. He fires the pass to Tompkins. He pops it up then to Morley, taking on Hannant and taking on Sivan Asiba. Sinfield again, quick play the ball there by England. Tompkins finds Eastman. Eastman then short pass to his captain, Peacock. Peacock stands, plays it to Eastman. Eastman gives it to Tompkins. Tompkins then helps it to Morley. Morley just stuttered for a moment or two then. A little bit flat in attack there. They need to get a little bit more room. Tompkins jinx away from one, jinx away from two, but can't get away from Luke Lewis. This is the last tackle. England are 10 metres away from the line. It's with Eastman. Eastman will flick the pass, or the kick rather, out wide. You've got to give credit to the English coach, Tony Smith. Kyle Eastman, he has got hardly any international experience, but what about the kick? It is pinpoint. Jared Hayne is beaten by Mr. Fox. It's a slide jump. It's a wonderful kick. And Fox comes up with the four. What a take. What a game. It's Spain tingling. An outstanding leap by the fantastic Mr Fox. And what a great sense of satisfaction for Peter Fox, who's worked so hard now for so long at taking high kicks, both defensively and offensively, and to get a try here in Leeds against Australia. Well, I'll tell you what, that just goes to show hard work does pay off at times. 18 tries for Hull Kingston Rovers this year, Peter Fox, and he was missing from the England side for the first two against France and Australia. He played last week, got two tries, Tony Smith had to pick him again and did, and Peter Fox has rewarded him with the confidence. England back in front, and this kick from Kevin Sinfield now. The captain of Leeds, he led them to victory here in the 2005 World Club Challenge. But he's missed with that particular kick. Terry. Well, Eddie, how did England get into this field position? They got a penalty off Australia. You only give penalties away when you feel under pressure. And the speed of which England are playing the ball, they're pushing forward in numbers. There's always somebody there supporting them on the shoulder. That's why England is so good. And enabling the outside back to kick on the front foot. And that is why that try was scored in the corner. What an effort from Peter Fox. Let us remember that it was the international player of the year, Jared Hayne that Peter Fox outjumped then to score that try. A tremendous effort. Certainly was, but I just go back to the fact that you talk about confidence in allowing youngsters. Look, forget about how old they are. If they're good enough, select them. And Tony Smith has done that, and they are repaying their coach. That was a sensational kick. Burgess is struggling to get to his feet. Asking the referee for a penalty then, it wasn't forthcoming. They can't have any complaints about the penalty count, England, though. It's 5-2 at the moment in their favour, and 10-6 on the scoreboard. Here goes Graham. Last tackle here for England. Still inside their own half. Kick will have to be good. Oh, it's an awful pass. And it's with Burgess. 
Well, they're caught in possession. And you know the what? Pass was poor. Do you know what's disappointing about that? Kevin Sinfield controlled that whole set, so the halves had time to set and position themselves to get a good kick away. In the end, they were out of position and had a poor option on the last tackle. The disappointing thing is they had time to prepare. Let Kevin Sinfield run the plays, let him work the forwards, and then let Kyle Eastman and Sam Tompkins prepare for a kick on tackle four or five. This is uh, Gallon, and there is a penalty for Australia. They're offside in the play of the ball. Just getting out of the blocks a little bit too quick there, Chris Bridge. Thurston finds Lockyer. Lockyer bullets the pass to Slater. Slater gets it away to Mora. He makes the mess of it. And so then there's Tompkins. It will be the first half out. Well, a golden opportunity for the green and golds there to get into the corner. He was put under pressure, and that's the power of Slater. And you could see there that Morris just overran it slightly. We've got to take out 10 minutes and get out the hand on the They're ball. very clever to the Australians at creating the gap out wide. And it comes about by the way that Billy Slater comes on the arc. And if he's not doing that, then you'll use the likes of English and Hodges. Here's the big fella. Yes, Earl Crabtree about to come on, and he made a bit of an impact when he got on the field at Huddersfield last week. That was Briscoe at dummy half. Morley driving it forward. Will it be Morley? Will it be Graham who will be spelled by the arrival of Crabtree? Jamie Peacock was almost through. He goes on for Morley, does Crabtree? Great roar from the ground. Briscoe, thought of the pass wide. Sinfi. Here's Graham. Tompkins. Good ball. Peacock. Uh, beg pardon, Ellis. Needs someone coming on the angle now. Catch out that first defence out wide near the play the ball area. Last one here for England. Eastman. It goes high. What's the chase like? Not bad. Oh, it's off. Crabtree. And Slater has it. But England have Slater. Just show you the difference in the confidence there when the high ball went up. Not one Australian risk having the chance of knocking on delicately poised this four nations final they have been beaten by british teams in one-off occasions in the past australia 88 19 92 some famous ones here 94 95 97 in the super league series 2006 but england or great britain have never won a major series or final this is a golden opportunity they're leading 10-6 with 24 minutes gone great hands here they go this is jared hayne jared hayne hacks it forward once english english scores brilliant try that is outstanding absolutely outstanding it certainly was but it looks as though they bombed it it looks as though they've gone for the wrong option he had men outside Made the break. Beautiful kick. Don't forget, Shane Hayne is watching, and they're just checking if there's any control. I'm not so sure there is, you oh, know. I, th I think he's got the wrist on it, Eddie. I know it's a big call, but watch here, slow motion. Yeah, he's got the wrist on that. That's got to be I'm not sure at all. I tell you what, that's got a massive question mark over that. Well, that angle, that angle is less convincing. <laughs> I'm going to backtrack a little. That's bounce. Well, I, I don't think it's bounce. I think he's got the forearm. Is there any daylight between that and the ball? I don't think there is. I think he just rolls it. 
I know we should be biased, but we've got to be fair income on this one. I think it's a try. So do I. And I think it is the try of the tournament. OK, there's a bit of a doubt over it, but I do think that the arm is still in contact. There's not a knock-on as it grows. There's, no, there's no daylight. It's got to be given. Well, you're 3-1 against you, Eddie, up here. <laughs> and like Phil says, could possibly be the try of the tournament, this. This is, this is well, sensational. If, if it's given, it is the try of the tournament, but I'm the only one in a, in a St George's vest. Oh, there's a few out there in the crowd, don't worry. What will it be? The Furious down the road. The Aussies are. The Englishmen are. The kick was outstanding. It took over two minutes to decide. Excellent try. Now it's been given. But for me, there is still a big question mark around that. But what speed off the mark. And the kick. Oh! Absolutely tremendous. Look at the back inside. Was wonderful work there, you know, by Jonathan Thurston. But look at that. The power and the strength. I think this is one of the great players of the modern day. His name is Greg English. Back on the inside. They did wonderful, didn't they? Kicked on through. Sensational. In it comes. Bang. What a game. End-to-end -end stuff. Full quality for your money tonight. All right, let me peel the St George's flag off for a moment. There is a question about that. Nothing more, a question. There, there is a question on the, ground, on, on the ground near the ball. However, there might be a red flag for England here, and that's the rook play that Australia used. Are the England forwards getting tired? Has Cameron Smith seen something that he thinks he can get a bit of joy out in the last 15 or so minutes of this game? Thurston kicked one from this side. This one here will give the Aussies the lead. It's 10 apiece, Thurston, to make it 12-10 to Australia. And we are approaching half-time. We've said England need to be level or ahead. Thurston's kick, and it's two points. Eddie, I think Brian Carney's spot on. We always knew that the British, the English forwards, should I say, are stronger in collision. They've got good leg driving, they're gaining those metres forward, but what they will do is they will tire at a part of the game that the Australians can expose. It's those two players again who have stung us and stung us from depth. Barry, can I just ask you one question while you're still down there? You were close to that. Try and no try. I thought it was no try, and everybody else in this stand as well is all giving the motion of a knock-on, but again, I'm, Eddie, I'm with you. Good on you, Baz. Here's Thiday for Australia, who lead 12-10, and we're in the last quarter of an hour of the first half. Isn't it amazing, though, Eddie, that we're talking about the try of the, uh, the competition, and in many ways, I really thought that uh, Jared Hayne had taken the wrong option. He had men outside and inside, but the ability to go full pelt, drop the ball without even skipping, and straight through. And so alert, wasn't it, Greg English? I think, if I remember rightly, during the Super League season, we talked about a similar try for that that the Leeds Rhino scored, a oh. kick that was fly-hacked forward at speed and was touched down, and we were full of praise for that. It was a magnificent effort, that. That ball has bounced backwards. That ball has bounced backwards off Lockyer. Still the last tackle. They're running it. Here's Jared Hayne, he's lost it, that will be the turnover. Well, that surprised me that the Australians didn't put a deep kick. They've taken the lead, feeling a little bit more comfortable about it all, and then they're just trying to keep it alive rather than someone take control out of there. Kick into the corner would have sent England back 20 or 30 metres. This is Ryan Hall. Hold, JT, go. Roby's out there, here's Graham. Getting up ahead of steam before he's uh, clattered by three green and gold jerseys. Last one off him was the substitute Brett White. Peacock on tackle number four. We'll play it here to Roby, who finds Sinfield. Now, Eastman. Well, Thurston ahead of him. Almost away from Jonathan Thurston. Cameron Smith finished him off. Last tackle here. Sinfield's kick. It's high into the Leeds air. Oh, well, Slater... Um, I thought Slater then had dived into the back of, um, of Sam Tonkin. Well, I think he's lucky to get away with this. Billy Slater did... 
Well, he's been, oh, he's been deemed right. to have interfered, and let's face it, uh, Sam oh. Tompkins was only trying to get to the ball. How has did, he, he? did he not knock on then? The referee, said that, the referee said that Tompkins knocked on. That was his interpretation. Well, it could, it could have been anything other, otherwise it would have been a penalty for interfering for the man trying to take the ball on the fall. I can't see any knock-on on that. Uh, no. Not, not from Tompkins, anyway. I, I appreciate that's what the referees decided, but I, I certainly can't see that. Pretty important time now, though, for both sides. Who's going to take control in regards to to the position? It just worried me, the, the wonderful inside ball from uh, Jonathan Thurston. He's lurking just off the fringe. Lockyer on his 50th international for the Kangaroos. He's been tackled a bit tonight already. Thurston, oh, what a lovely chip over the top. Well, now he's got England yeah, for obstruction. He, he was taken out, no doubt about it. Neat little chip over the top. I, I said that he, would, he was lurking. This is the quality of it. Did they move backwards? They don't have to move. Yeah, it came in. Little Gareth doubt, Ellis. Gareth Ellis went moving yeah. right across. It's, it's a poor option to do that. You're going to get a penalty given against you if you, if you move across the player. Just run with him, run back with him if you can. You'll slow him down enough that way. This, and by the way, is a bit of respect. They're kicking this. And not only that, it's the fact that there were already somebody there. Graham was there in the position. All he had to do was stand. He would have had to go oh, round Graham. It's an action born out of fatigue, in my opinion. Boss. Gareth Ellis has worked very hard for 30 minutes. A lot of the other forwards on the field get, get a rest in that period of time. Gareth Ellis well, hasn't. And just on. that split second, really. Lungs bursting here now. Back. You know, for the England players to win this game, they'll have to go through the rugby league equivalent of a near-death experience. They'll have to push themselves harder than they've ever done before <laughs> in some games, particularly the younger ones like Shenton, Tompkins, Eastman and Fox, ones with less experience at this international level. And now when your lungs are burning, your legs feel heavy, it's about being able to push on through this pain. Adrian Morley watching from the sideline as Jonathan Thurston lines up this kick to give Australia a four-point advantage, which he does with ease. Try from Morris and Inglis. Three goals from Thurston. Burgess with the try, and Fox with the try for England. And just the one successful kick from Kevin Sinfield. It well, is now 14-10. Well, you spoke about the respect that the green and golds are giving to the English boys, but to be fair, that was the right option because they can just control things down now. They've taken the lead. We saw earlier, didn't we, when they tried to keep the ball alive when it should have been a kick into the corner. And you talk about, Phil, the, the fact that England have got to push themselves further. They might have been quite happy that Australia took that kick. Quite just give possibly. them a couple of minutes. It looks as though Australia are playing at a higher tempo. I know Tony Smith has introduced Ben Westwood now Woo! just to try and, I think, uh, add some freshness to the defence in the middle of the field, which is where Australia have looked strong. This is Paul Gallen. He's had an awful year at club level. It's another finish second bottom. He's trying to atone for that here tonight. The England supporters here at Ellen Road tonight just holding their breath. With eight minutes to go, they know this is a crucial stage of the match. And they're playing it very comfortable, aren't they, Australia? They're uh, quite happy to just take it first receiver. That's a nice kick into the corner. What's the chase like? There's four or five there. Here's Fox. Ooh, that looked high from Thurston. And he's seen it, has he? No, he said dominant. He says play on. So Ryan Hall will try and run this ball back now. Two, Super League's top try scorer this year. Well, that looked very high for as far as I'm concerned. Thurston swinging right over the top. Now, the big problem for England is can they get out of their own quarter? It's going to be difficult. The Australians have up the tempo and they're defensive. And that is great defence. Fantastic defence. Ellis goes down in a heap on the fourth tackle. England are only just 23 metres away from their own line. Graham. Last drive, perhaps, this set of six gets them to centre field, midway inside their own half. The kick from Tompkins has to be good. Well, it hits the ground, but it bounces first time into Billy Slater's arms. And Slater heads off almost instinctively down that left-hand side. It was a poor kick, and you can see now that they're playing the ball. Oh, that should have been a, uh, a penalty. He was interfering, not that play the ball, have got away with it. But the difference between the other set of six, England could not get anywhere near the halfway line. Look at this, the green and golds are already over it. Well, you'd hope with the introduction of James Robey that they won't go away from the, what the game they played in the first 20 minutes. They still need to play hard and fast and direct. Let Kevin Sinfield sit on the fringes, but let James Robey dictate the play through the middle like Sinfield did for the first 20 minutes.
I must say, England do look better when Sinfield's playing as an out and out dummy half, don't they? And yet he's the international loose forward of the year. Fides dropped that. Tompkins has it. It was a poor pass, so put the scrum down. No advantage to England, and uh, Thide realizes that he has just blown a very good position indeed. Good work, Michael Shenton. He's got through a lot of work, Shenton, in the, the defensive role. He has in throughout the series, Steve, don't you think, Michael yep. Shenton? He was talking this week that he'd love to get over the whitewash at the other end, but uh, his defence in this series has been outstanding. Yeah, you're right. What's all that about? Thiday. Well, Thiday has turned the clock back. What's that for? Get that foot out of the way. Dearly me, contest the scrums? Well, it, no, he's insisting. He's ensuring that uh, England feed it behind the second row's legs. It's Ryan Hall. It's dominant Australian defence at the moment that England are finding hard to crack. Westwood. Well, early in the game, England were running the angles just on that first link. They're now going straight at the defence. They've got to start coming in on the angles. Penalty here for offside against Australia. The referee was screaming at them to keep out of it. I think El Crabtree had it as well. There's about four to five to choose from. Listen to this crowd now, and he's given another. He'll call the captain over. He's had enough of it. He will. He wants a word. Come out here. Come out here. And he's calling number 16 out to him, Anthony Watmo. Yep. He's had a call from the touch judge by the sound of things. Mate, I'm calling you 10 metres, you're not coming back continually. Mate, I, don't need you, I don't need you going around the neck area trying to rake him out of the, the head. head. Pull it out of the Get back on side. Going around the neck area, short 10 metres. So, two penalties he saw there, the referee. A short 10 metres and uh, going around the head. Quick, quick tap it was by Roby. Here come England then on the front foot. Graham drives it in on the first. This is where Crabtree should be used. It's with Eastman. Crabtree it is. Six foot seven inches of Earl Crabtree. Move. Move. Sort of now, Sinfield. Back to Tompkins. Not the best pass to Sam Tompkins. That's why oh. passing accuracy at the highest level is what it's all about. Chances are gone in a millisecond. Eastman, Eastman. Ducking and weaving Move. Kyle Eastman. So getting much, England to within half a metre of the line. So much power in those legs, hasn't he? Sinfield again. Thought about the kick. Sinfield going for broke. Gets the ball away. Graham keeps it alive. Here's Tompkins. Wide it goes from Tompkins. Ryan Hall. Oh, he's never had defence like that coming at him in the Super League this year. Great the work from Luke Lewis. Luke Lewis just got him at the right moment. Tompkins with the kick. Floats it towards Dean Goal. Knocked back. Oh, very lucky, put under a lot of pressure there. Well, what's all that about? Well, first in saying that he's being taken out. Well, the referee said play on, voluntary tackle, and then it was it was Jared Hayne who tackled Billy Slater. Here's Jared Hayne. Fires the pass. Morris. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Slater pulled it in, didn't knock on. Yeah, but then it was Hayne who tackled him. Oh, it's amazing. Oh. Uh, 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 I have on, to say, us. OK, this referee from New Zealand, Leon Williamson, is not Four. top class. We know that. Let's go back okay. to that previous set that England had. And the worry is, you, you spoke about Kevin Sinfield, Eddie, and you said his best position appears to be at hooker at the moment. It's when England try and caress the ball sideways that they look clueless. They need to go back and play direct, play to their strengths, which isn't shifting the ball. It's playing direct at the Australians. Thurston with the kick. And the other thing that we really need to do, England need to bring in Kyle Eastman a little bit tighter. He's been playing out on that uh, right-hand centre position. I think he should be running at the forwards. He's got the pace. He's certainly got the step and the ability to get away. Fox was nearly clear then. Tompkins. Shenton. Australia hunting in numbers for the Englishman who's in possession of the ball, Roby. I think Australia's experience tells them as well, if they push hard here now for the next few seconds, there's a the chance that they're going to get an opportunity to score before half-time. They've tried as best possible to contain England. 
Well, that's a very good carry by James Graham. Now, if you've not been involved in this set, carrying the ball, you need to chase as well as you can here you now on this kick. Good kick from Tompkins. He was under enormous pressure, but it lands safely into the arms of Billy Slater. Now then, as I say, instinctively, they go down that left-hand side. This is Jared Hay. And again, we see the position that Australia received the ball. Well, Bridges, no respecter of reputations, none whatsoever. The kick, Eddie, or Steve, I was oh, not English, off. English is away again. And Hayne will have it. It's a knock-on, the referee's blown the whistle. Did it not come off his foot? No. Well, Hayne's saying to the insisting. referee... Has he back heel? What? Watch this. He's yeah, back no, heel. It's, it's touched his, I think it's touched his hand first. Pretty what, difficult decision. What, still, how would that be a knock-on, though? It's well, a knock-on there. There, that's it. Knock-on. End of story. Irrespective, the ball's going forward. Even if it hits his foot, it's got to be a knock-on. But what about the break? Does it not hit the ground or hit somebody else? No, no, no. It doesn't. If it goes forward, he can deem it as a knock-on. Come on, boys. Get down there. Get down there. Get down. Get down, Kevin. He's not happy. Have a look, he said. Well, I assume that's what he's doing with the two fingers in his eyes. I'm putting a question mark beside that decision. If you want to win this tough, you need a bit of luck, and I think the fact that English didn't convert that into a try was the luck. You know, 20 years ago, they pulled down the Berlin Wall. We almost could have done with the stretch of it, Eddie, to put on that far side of the field if you took English in ahead. We could. We could have done with the Berlin Wall, not the dominoes that went down this week. Because every time that uh, they get the ball, Oh, hang on. Here's Eastmund. Good tackle by Billy Slater. But England, they end the half on the front foot. It's going to make the point every time they get the ball, Australia, they look left. They go down that left-hand channel. They challenge the England defence on their right-hand side. Well, look, England are not out of it at half-time this year. It's 14-10 to Australia. But England, they have done a very good job thus far. That's the scene at Ellen Road. It's the Gillette Four Nations final, and it still has to be won in the next 40 minutes. The green and goals, they're ahead, but England very much in the contest. Meanwhile, here in the city of Leeds at Elland Road, it's the Four Nations final, and England very, very much in the hunt. Trailing by four points at half-time. There are four Warrington personalities out there, Bridge, Morley, Westwood, and, of course, coach Tony Smith. And lest we forget, Warrington legend Parry Gordon played for Warrington for 18 years. His funeral was held yesterday. He died suddenly last week. He played in the 73-74 Warrington team that won four trophies capped by Great Britain, also a member of the England 1975 World Cup squad, and we send our sympathy to his family. Meanwhile, Australia and England with a job to do. Australia get us underway, courtesy of the boot of Cameron Smith. Here is James Graham. There's the first collision of this second half. It's pretty important that England get back into their kicking game as well. It wasn't all that brilliant, especially late in that first half. And they've got to tighten up their defence. Missed tackles in the first 40. England 14, Australia 7. And the clean breaks, it was fantastic to start with. They had three clean breaks. But Australia came back and they got nine. It just showed you that they controlled the last 10, 15 minutes of the first stanza. Well, the English combination with Jared Hayne down this left-hand side for Australia is giving Chris Bridge and company a torrid time. The kick is deep from Sinfield, it's over the head of Billy Slater. Now, did he touch that? No, he didn't. He appeared to want to go for it and thought, boy, this is spinning away. I missed it by a mile. Yep. You live in hope sometimes, Eddie. Living hope all the time, Steve. Yeah, we certainly do, but uh, full credit to the English boys. They looked to have this game under control, but the Australians, time and time again, their ability to get themselves good field position. And here they come with Lockyer. Darren Lockyer. Oh, Briscoe. Bump. Down he goes. Felt that. The Aussie skipper. But they're still coming forward. And this is Lewis. 
and away from the challenge is Kurt Gidley. But in the end, Gareth Ellis got to him. Super stuff by Briscoe, wasn't it? Oof. Looked like a collision then between uh, Ellis and uh, big old Crabtree. But uh, they managed to bring Anthony Watmo to the floor. It's Thurston. Thurston then to Lockyer, standing deep. Deep again is Slater. Here is Inglis. Here is Inglis. Oh, he's left two in his wake. He's left three in his wake. In the end, Kevin Sinfield brings him down on the last. And it's Cameron Smith to Lockyer, who kicks the ball towards the in-goal area. And is it carried over the line? No, it isn't. It was over the dead ball line. Controlled restarts in this competition. Nice take, good position there. But England's body language and reaction area was a positive. They wanted to get on with the game quickly. They want to take the play if possible to Australia. And they're not going to let the Kangaroos dictate the pace at which this second half is played. We knew we were pretty superior in the forward pack, but we really need to start doing a little bit more. And especially that good running from the dummy half by Roby. And a great offload by Roby to Sinfield, but there was no second phase. Tomkins with the long sleeves to Graham, to Eastman, to Bridge. And Bridge will take them on, gets the ball out the back door. Fox has put it down. He is English, and Bridge recovers. Bit of a panic pass in the end there at the opportunity. I mentioned just before the half time break, Eddie, that. Oh, that's going to be a two on one. You haven't seen it. There was two there. They got away with it, England. Westwood has spinned it. Do you think he got away with that? Here's Crabtree. I made the point, and this is the incident. Yeah, Crabtree had already joined. Actually, I think he got it before. I think it's a good decision from Williamson, that. Either way, we've got to get Eastman a little bit tighter to the play the ball area. He's got to take him on the forwards. Tompkins. Stepping Tompkins. This is where Eastman really well, they all offside. Every single one of those Australian defenders were offside. They were in front of the line, not even one foot on the line. Here's Westwood. Still Westwood. Come on, move! Hold. Ruby. Peacock. Great Ooh. run from the skipper. Ooh. Underneath the posts. Ruby fires the pass to Tompkins. Wide it goes, not the best to Ellis. It just allowed Australia to come in at the vital second. Make no Ooh. further progress, Gareth Ellis. Oh. Oh. Here is Tompkins again. Trying to duck under oh, the challenges, clear. but duck straight oh. into the considerable frame of Cameron Smith. It's Sinfield. It's still Sinfield. Pretty solid defence. Gets the ball Good away. Oh. Eastman. decision and a good decision it, it, it's a bit of a worry the, the English yardage oh. game is definitely causing this mobile Australian pack huge problems but where what have England got in the last in the last few meters of the field where's the finesse where's the magic to break this defense oh. when Australia are on red alert the one thing that the Australian coach Tim Sheens will be a little bit worried about that on that defensive play Greg English came Stand right up. out of the line on the angle and left the overlap kangaroos very very Lucky to get away with that. Three tackles gone, this set of six for Australia. Cameron Smith at dummy half, and he finds Luke Lewis, who brushes off a couple. Tompkins, though, stuck to the guns. Stand up, keep your hand off the ball. Whoa, there's a mistake from Kirk Gidley. And it could be a costly one as well. He should be planning a move. He got the nod of uh, Tim Sheens ahead of David Shillington, who was expected to play. Kirk Gidley. He's coming up, wrapping the ball up in the tackle. And this is the moment when Westwood got the ball. See, it's one on one there, and he got it before Earl Crabtree joined in. But only just. Keep an eye on Westwood. He caused the Australians a lot of problems on the England's uh, Australian's left edge defence in uh, in Wigan two weeks ago. So let's see if he can do it again tonight. This is Shenton, meanwhile. Good leg pump from Michael Shenton. 
Roby. Morley. He takes the battle forward, doesn't he, Adrian Morley? Roby again. Peacock, another one who won't take a backward step. Eastman took that on the fly. Roby, scampers from dummy half, gets it away to Sinfield, short ball. No way through for Ellis, though. England setting down this right-hand side. Slight delay while Ellis' stud is entangled in a kangaroo sock. Meanwhile, it's Westwood, he gives it to Bridge. Bridge running flat, now he straightens it up, gets the ball away to Briscoe. Last one here for England. Tremendous good work there by Darren Lockyer. Experience showing there, knew the inside pass. Ryan Hall trying to dump it back, does. Roby keeps it alive. Good crossfield kick. Who's after this? Oh, that's not forward. They can't get Jared Hayne down in the in goal area. Boy, it turned out to be an absolutely wonderful kick. I'm not so sure that uh, Chris Bridge didn't interfere on the jump either way. The Aussie's very, very lucky to get away with it. Westwood flying into the tackle. The crowd have lifted to that. Come on, stand up. You're milking it. Here's Simon Asiva. England on the front foot again. Start of the second half. And it's so important to keep the Australians in their own quarter. David Baycock. They've struggled to get out of it. That is great defence. Last tackle, they've only made 37 metres. That's what the graphic says, but they're 22 away from their own line. Lockyer with the kick. Not the best. Straight into the arms of Ryan Hall. Now Ryan Hall gets over halfway on the first tackle. That's good. Quick play of the ball. Briscoe, scoot away. There he goes. Good work from England. Want to play the ball quickly, they do eventually to Roby. Roby's getting some treatment. Either way, it's good work. Two play the balls have made 30 metres forward. Now they can launch something. Where's Eastman? Sinfield is there. Here is Peacock. And Peacock spinning. Peacock! Great run from Peacock. This is Tompkins. Changes the direction of the attack. Ellis. Ellis. Burgess. Yes. Sam Burgess with his second play. Right slap down next to the upright. Sam Burgess. The smile says it all. Look out, Australia. I am coming. He'll be in the end. Super League, but he will carry the Super League flag with him down under, and this series has done him no end of good. And England the level with a kick to come. And it all came about because of great defence that stopped Australia getting out. What about the inside pass from Tompkins? They came out of the line, they didn't fill in. We talk about coming on the angle, and that is what Mr. Burgess did. Neat little flick, Ellis says, Come and get me. Look at that, straight through, Thurston didn't fill in, Burgess tried number two. Sheer celebration throughout the England camp. And Sinfield now to add the extras. It was Burgess's first touch since he came back. And Sinfield's boot pushes England ahead, Barry. Eddie, you're right, that was Sam Burgess's first touch. He was warming up on this sideline, desperate to get onto the pitch. He just ran a real good line, hard and strong. Australians are on the ropes. They've had to do a number of sets of six in defence. The big English forwards are really taking it to them. What a pass as well from Tompkins in the build-up to that. He scored after 11 minutes of the first half. He scored after 10 of the second. Sam Burgess for England. They're ahead in the Four Nations final with a half an hour to go. And the chance to score that try came from the set before, as Steve-O mentioned. The defensive set and the pressure on Lockyer's kick allowed England to return the ball and play it closer to the Australian line. Sinfield just slipped the short pass. Well, the message is out now for England, because remember, two quick play the ball, got them 35 metres downfield, and it's catching out the, the forwards. The Australian forwards, to me, they are tiring somewhat. 
You can't say that, that's a poor kick. But you can't say that about the three quarters in the green and gold. They've got the power and they've got the speed. But we hold that two-point lead. We just caught a glimpse of Tony Smith, the England coach. He coached Leeds to World Club Challenge victory here against the Bulldogs in his only previous assignment at Ellen Road. 39-32. Tony Smith unbeaten here as a coach. 16-14 up after 52 minutes or thereabouts. Giving the Kangaroos a real fright. And this is where they've got to be careful, England, because we've known throughout the years that Australia have a habit of clawing their way back. Oh, remember that Ashley very series. Quick, yeah, very quickly after they've uh, conceded a try. Oh, and they get a penalty here. The 2006 Ashes series, it gives us all sleepless nights. They were a couple of minutes from winning all three tests. They lost 3-0 in the end. 2003, I beg your pardon, it was. Well, Kevin Sinfield tried his best to get out of the way, but just got tangled up. As I say, they allowed the Australians to get in a pretty good position. Reckon they'll just do two drives with the forwards, and then we'll see the magic of Thurston and Lockyer. And with so much power out wide, they're always a threat. This is Gallant. He's taken Sinfield back about five or six metres with him then. Needed reinforcements, they arrived. Here's Jared Hain. Danger every time this fella has the ball, but Peacock dealt with the threat. So did Burgess. Cameron Smith, Sivan Asiva. Three tackles gone, they're a metre away, Australia. Cameron Smith again. Jonathan Thurston fires the pass to Lockyer, fires the pass to Slater. Short ball, great defence. Oh, he was so close to getting that down, Gidley. A more good defence from Tompkins. He scored. Up. He scored in it. I think he. I think he thinks he's got this down. I'm sure he, has. he thinks it. That's the reason why Leon Williamson. The Kiwi referee... Is it Billy Slater? It is. He scored. It is. He took it from dummy half straight away. It looked like Gidley had gone close, and this is going to be a try. Oh, it is. That's a try. It all came about. It looked for a moment as so though Kirk Gidley had gone close, and then he just said, hey, we'll play the ball quickly. That's a try. And you know where that come from? Bill pointed it out up here in the commentary. England got caught with too many players on this right-hand side and Australia exposed it then on the left-hand side. It's happened game and game and game again. And it all came about, remember, by that penalty given away by Kevin Sinfield. He got tangled in the tackle. Here's a confirmation. No doubt this time. Try is given to Billy Slater. Look for a moment as though Tompkins had got underneath him and prevented the score. But Billy Slater just grounded it, and exactly as happened in the first half, England's lead lasted two minutes. It's lasted three minutes in this second 40, and Billy Slater has nudged Australia ahead again. This is the incident. Sinfield, he just couldn't get away. Was he being held down by Thurston? Either way, here we go, three. Now then, watch the referee. He's getting close there, that's Gidley. And he's not really in a good position, because he's looking as though the ball's going out wide. Briscoe obscures him, and that's why he has to go to the screen, but there's no doubt Slater has snuck in on the blind side. Tompkins did his damnedest to stop him. We mention it time and time again. Every time the green and golds, whether it be in their own country up or up in the northern hemisphere, if you take the lead, you can't relax, they will always bounce back. Well, he's been perfect with the boots, Jonathan Thurston. This is a difficult kick for him, far out on the touchline. And Billy Slater now, six tries in three meetings against England. What a record that fella's got. First and then, 60 goals prior to this match for his country, so 63 now. This was 64, and more importantly, for a four-point advantage, missed that one. Terry? 
Eddie, when you play rugby, you've got to have self-belief in your teammates. Everyone that you play with, you've got to know that they're going to turn up for you. Now, the good thing with this Australian side, they've got so many leaders, so many calming influences. When they go behind on the scoreboard, they know exactly what to do. They've got six club captains in the 17. But this English side, I was just watching them, what they're doing. And, and uh, Jamie Peacock just said, let's get back to playing direct and let's take the game to the Aussies. I think the greatest test in a game of international league, Eddie, is that of your concentration. England did remarkably well on the previous play, went outnumbered to defend and prevent a try, but that split second in which they relaxed momentarily was enough for Billy Slater's Two, eyes and Gamer Worthers to sense a chance to score. Hold, hold, well, I think England were 15-point underdogs coming into this match. It's not over yet, but it's been a, a real scrap. And English waits. He's a man mountain, Greg Inglis. And he's not frightened to roll his sleeves up and do a bit of hard work as well as we saw there running from the dummy half. But this is a key factor. They've got over the halfway line, the kick and chase. Is it going to be good? First, ooh, that ricochet is not played at, not played at. It's still the last tackle. That's an F on. Little bit of fortune shining on England then. Yeah, the overlap as well. Jonathan Thurston knew that. Just panicked at the last moment. The ricochet got away with it. Watch this. There's no one at home apart from Tompkins. You could see there that Ryan Hall had already dropped back, obviously in, in anticipation of the kick down field. England have got less and less men there. They're going with the man with the ball. There is fewer support players than they've had in good periods, and they need to remember what it was that made them strong in these games. Sinfield finds Peacock. Here is Tompkins. Tompkins, ooh, that was a very good tackle by Lewis. Not the best play of the ball, that. No, he's cleared the rack. You've lost and he's the given a knock on, but there was a, a fair amount of interference at that play, the ball, and it just shows you that just at times when you don't need to panic. Did he try to milk the penalty? He's a smart cookie, this year. Just give me your nose a wipe, mate. Listen up, boys. Well, he Don't certainly wasn't Keep touched by Luke here, Lewis. Right? Keep working Was it a gamble on, that has not Out. come off? So Australia back in Hold possession. On. Come on, quickly. Go. Thurston. England have to work so hard now. Gallon trying to get rid of the get rid of the ball, Let's but on, goes down in the tackle. Up. Cameron Smith, English, Westwood did well then. Smith, good run from the substitute, Anthony Watmo. Smith, Thurston, great ball, Hayne, Sinfield did well. That looked forward as well, got away with it. Smith, Thurston, running in Australia, looking for the man in the corner, brilliant. Absolutely sensational try from Brett Morris. No need to check the grounding. That's a fantastic try. Well, he's going to check the grounding, but you're right. And if he has grounded this, this is brilliantly executed. England, when you think they've done so well in defending, Thurston pulls out that kick. Compare that kick to the kicks we've been seeing on the last tackle from the English. Super sub. Onside, clearly. On you spot on there, Brian. And what a finish. They know how to control the game. They now want to take the option. No doubt in the mind, Phil Benson will give this. It'll be the TRY. And what looked as though England had taken over when they took that 16-14 lead is confirmation of it. And suddenly England face their first crisis of this match, really. Not the fact that they've gone behind. They have been coming from behind for much of this game, but... They have just increased the lead and the kick to come. To become a legend in sports, Eddie, you need to be able to come up with big players at big moments in big matches. And Jonathan Thurston has showed a superior skill level to many of the other players in the world. Under pressure here on the last tackle, he knows he has to deliver the right option and he does it perfectly. Just hope that his feet teammate Brett Morris can finish it. And Brett Morris did finish it. And Brett Morris, that's two tonight six tries as i said earlier leading try scorer in this tournament 
in just three international appearances. This is his fourth cap, he's got six tries. They find them, don't they? They certainly do, Eddie, and the vision that was seen by this fella, Jonathan Thurston. He could see that Ryan Hall was just away from the touchline, just into the corner, and he knew, and Morris reacted. He responded to the best effect. Thurston to try and add the extras. He's missed it. Well, Eddie, I was talking about Carmen influences, and Jonathan Thurston, I was watching him in that set of six, he was moving across the back of the players, he was organising, he was saying that he wanted his troops to go into the middle of the pack, suck in the English defenders, they come in and there was going to be gaps out there, but I was just watching the English forwards there, and the, all the team, and they were very quiet, they need to up themselves, they need to come up with a, a big shot, and they really need to lift down that end of the pack. Oh! Well, there's a problem here for Michael Shenton. Shenton was don't out before he hit the deck. Him, ben Hammond came forward, and Shenton was airborne, and his head smashed into the turf. That's a worry. He might have got a head knock as well, Eddie, before uh, as well as That's hitting the ground. Idea, Certainly did. You can see the contact there. Yeah. He's gone. Yeah, thanks, mate. So, he was out before it. he got anywhere near terra firma. There, it was uh, nothing out of the ordinary. In regards to uh, foul play, Ben Hannan just charged through. Tense moments for the England coach, Tony Smith. Still not out of this, still only six points separate. The hope is that Shenton is, Michael Shenton is going to be OK. We, we mentioned this man, Dr Brooks, before. He, he's in excellent hands and, and, and he's going to be expertly treated. As we're moving into the last quarter of this game, just to sort okay. of talk about the game, okay. A coach in Australia, I had to ask him to explain what was the coach going to be thinking as, it going, as we're moving into the last quarter. What he wants to do is have his key energy and enthusiastic and intelligent players on the field for this last quarter if he needs to either close out a game when he's in front or chase a game. Has Tony Smith coordinated his replacements such that he can get the energy energised and the smart players out on the field for this last 20 minutes? We saw a shot there of uh, Kevin Sinfield and there is a powerhouse of James Graham. But it's going to take some skill factor to break down this Australian defence. Tony and Smith is aware of that. And when you talk, Brian, about how Tony Smith uses his interchange bench, the next couple of minutes and the fitness or otherwise of Michael Shenton and the way it looks, we might not be seeing him again tonight. That could play a crucial part. And this is what a coach has got to deal with. Our thoughts are obviously with Michael Shenton at this moment, and, and we hope it's not going to be a serious injury. It, it doesn't look great at the moment. Sometimes a lot of this neck, neck braces is a precaution, uh, you know, just to ensure that he gets he gets off the, off the field or on the stretcher without moving too much. So we hope he's all right, but you're right. It could totally affect the way Tony Smith was trying to coordinate his interchange. Well, Tony Smith took a, a huge gamble in many bodies' eyes in regards to having four forwards on the bench, of course, Ben Westwood, no stranger to the centre position, and neither is that fellow. And, of course, Gareth Ellis, he made his name uh, at Wakefield, playing in the centre many, many times before. So he's got quite a few options as the England coach. But the most, the most important factor, of course, is that uh, the attention to Michael Shenton is the only important thing at this point in time. Here's the uh, collision where he goes into attempt to tackle Ben Hannant. It's worth pointing out that uh, we've seen many progressions and developments of our sport over the last decade. The on-field care of rugby league players has been a fantastic uh, and something that rugby league is very proud of. The, uh, all of the uh, medical staff at professional and amateur clubs now attend courses regularly to ensure that we can give the best possible uh, immediate uh, medical care and attention to players who suffer injuries and I, and I talk about that don't you grassroots level Eddie it's uh, it's important now that people recognize what you do initially when somebody gets an, a, an injury is very important the early reactions we see the Australian players Cooper Cronk one of them uh, watching on yeah when you think about it Cooper Cronk can't even get a place in this side that's how that's how strong the Australians are but uh, of more immediate concern to England and their supporters is the health of Michael Shenton. If Michael Shenton can't continue, what way are we thinking that he's going to go? Will he put yeah. Kyle Eastman into that left centre position, pull Kevin Sinfield into the halves and slip James Roby in, in at nine? It's a, 
it certainly would I would say it's going to pull away from what Tony Smith was wanting to do in this last 20 minutes and the team he was hoping to finish with but it's one of the things that happens in the game and you got to you th think on the on the hoof and as uh, Steve rightly said Gareth Ellis is no stranger to playing in the in the center position for, for Tony Smith during his Leeds right. days and there has been big calls for him to play in the center now people have questioned his pace and all that so so they might get to see might they get their wish granted in unfortunate circumstances well we approaching the final quarter and I think it's maybe time for Tony Smith to be going through his mind as to okay he's got the option of changing a few players to play out out wide on that left uh, left hand center and let's hope that the to Michael Shenton is going to be okay. Well, everyone to a man in this stadium applauding Michael Shenton off the field and uh, even Greg Inglis was just uh, resting his legs while all that was going on. In that final quarter, Eddie, Tony Smith knows that he's at one point, if they're still six points down, he's going to have to gamble with something. They're going to have to come up with something. I keep mentioning the fact maybe you talk about Eastman going out wide. I really would want Kyle Eastman to stand a little bit first receiver to ask a few questions of the Australian forwards in defence. Let's get down to Bill quickly. Uh, the mystery might be solved. Gareth Ellis has just taken the field as a replacement for Michael Shenton. Where Ellis lines up, we still wait to see, but it could well be that he'll fill that centre role. Yes, Gareth Ellis quickly off the bench to uh, come into the action and. Uh, it's been pointed out to me that the leaders changed hands three times tonight. There's never been more than six points between the two nations. And that's the situation we have now as we reach the three-quarter mark of this final, this Gillette Four Nations final. And what a great tournament it's been. He's lost the ball there. Well, he's finishing the just well out. Out. I think the side of his head and neck twisted. Oh. James Graves. That was another that was another collision. It was a head clash, wasn't it? An accidental head clash. And Burgess came in uh, on the second, well, and as soon as he spins going. around, he gets Burgess. I think that's whiplash. I don't know if you're sure he head clashes. I think that the the impact with uh, James Graham, I think, is whipped Ben Hannan's head back that hard. It's knocked him out. Well, it wouldn't surprise me. He had a big collision, of course, with uh, Michael Shenton just a, a few moments ago. Well, the referee just said the clock has been stopped, but uh, I don't think he, and he might be able to hear him in the background saying, I did stop it because James Graham asked him the question, I think. But the uh, the clock was still ticking. Yeah, it went, it went on for a while, that's for sure. And it's it now ben Hannon, the hunter, becomes the hunted. Which side now is going to gain the confidence? Because sometimes when you we've had a second stoppage. That's why we put the scrum down. Who will it affect most? Jeez, right. You're a try. Just to tidy up on the homework after the last incident, we, I think we, we see Ellis has gone out into the left centre position. So, uh, so that, that answers that question. Eastman's going to stay in the halves. Well, England get head and feet at this scrum after that uh, hefty collision with Ben Hannant. And Hannant, as you see, is packing down front row of that scrum. I just told you, boys. Get your foot forward, Adrian. It's amazing. Imagine a referee saying, you're not allowed to strike for the ball. I was talking to Fred Lindop about that the other night, Steve-O, and your name came into the equation. You know what he thinks of you, of course. Of course. <laughs> well, we think that to ourselves. Hope you're feeling well out there, Fred. He's in good spirits, I'll tell you. Here is Briscoe, meanwhile, for England. Hunted down by Sam Thide. We've got to our start asking the question now. Really get into it. Come on. Great offload by oh. Peacock to Sinfield, who puts the ball down. Well, I pose the question. James Graham right down his ear then. Forget it, forget it. But I did pose the question, Eddie, is regards when you've had two stoppages like that, you know, who's going to be concentrating the most? Now listen up, boys. And, uh, errors like the that up. Let the ball get can in the prove tunnel, extremely right? costly. There's a vulnerability about this Australian team that I don't think we've seen too often. It's, I know it, they're, they're ahead on the scoreboard and, and they've got possession of the ball now, but England do look threatening when they have the ball. If they cut out those little errors, they might come, out, come, come back into this game. I can see it, he's got him locked. Go. Yes, there's a vulnerability about the forward pack, but there is an invincibility about the three-quarter line Agreed. that the Australians Agreed. parade. 
They are sensational with the ball in their hands. Frighteningly so, and this is one of them, Jared Hayne. To be fair, it has been the best, shall we say, display by the Australian forwards in this tournament today. Here's Billy Slater. And again, look, they're in the England half when they get the last, and they're going to run it. Running it on the last. Did he see the player? He's still alive. The playing zero, says the referee. He's given Australia six to go. I don't know where he saw that, but he's a lot closer to the action than we are, so is his touch judge. Well, he kept it alive, and I think, I think there was just a hand came out. That's the reason when it went behind the players. Cameron Smith. Looks like Ben Hannon's fully recovered from that uh, clash of heads or whatever it was. They're setting up to get the ball to Greg Inglis. Sooner or later, he has to get hold of it. Thurston to Lockyer. Slater stabs the ball behind them. And Peter Fox just well, flicks it out. Second tackle kick. Yeah, but they know they've got the pressure. Slater knows that they're running down. And Fox has had to take it over the sideline. This will be head and feed to the green and gold. There's the incident. Yes, Ryan Hall snaked out of hand, six to go. Credit Jonathan Thurston's reaction as well. Straight on the ball, straight up. Instead of just standing and watching it go to ground, straight on the ball and regathers possession. Well, this is the third set England have got to defend and uh, Australia going to get the feed, obviously, and the possession from this scrum. English is hanging way back. Is he coming as a second phase? He's right in the middle of the screen there. Thurston. Thurston gives it to Slater. Slater still hands the ball on to Gidley. England come back in numbers. This is a vital set of six for England now. It really is. Can't be overemphasized as Nathan Hindmarsh returns. Ball is flicked up to Watmore. Backwards, says the referee. Thurston gives it to Lockyer. England muscle up in defence, but that's only the second tackle. There's four more coming at them. Cameron Smith. Back it comes to Thurston. Here is Slater. Slater changes the direction. Brilliant on his feet. Absolutely brilliant on his feet. England got to be careful they don't give away a penalty because the Aussies will take the two points. Don't worry about that. Cameron Smith. Thurston stabs the ball in. And England have it back. They survive. Sinfield atones for the error. Not the best option there by Jonathan Thurston. Not at all. Not on the third tackle. Not at all. They really should have been just driving forward and trying to stretch. Remember, Australia, they're leading by the six. They don't have to panic. They don't have to ask those questions in attack. England do. Bridge lost he's, that. He's lost it and they haven't been seen by the officials. They've had the stroke of luck, and they turn it into their advantage. Boy, that. that should have been a knock-on. Oh, that was it's Jamie awesome. Peacock, wasn't it, with that kick? It was, and it was straight into the arms of Jared Hayne. You just get the feeling that they're beginning to look a little bit tired, and they're losing the plot. They should have had themselves organised. You can't have a big forward like that put in a kick downfield. You're absolutely right. We banged on about it all tournaments so far, how the last tackle kick has not been good enough. The halves have had time in that set to, to set up and get themselves ready for a kick instead of allowing it to go to a prop forward to kick. England flying into the tackle. That was Peacock. This is Cameron Smith. Here's Hindmarsh. Surely Tim Sheens, the coach of Australia, would have got the message out and say, listen, we play out the full six, we may kick on the last. Let's not do anything fancy. It's Lockyer. It's Slater. It's Gidley. England deal with the threat, that's the last. But they're ten metres away, that's all. Here's Lockyer. Up goes the kick. Slater looked offside. Now then, has they, have they got the try here? Because Cameron Smith... He's celebrating as though he has, but I looked as that kick came across, it looked as though Slater had just drifted ahead of the kicker. Was he onside? No. Onside. He's onside there. Yes, now he does he knock it back? Did you see the try in the centenary game, Steve-O, when Inglis did the same thing? If he gets, if he gets to this, that's the play on. This is going to be a try, a sensational try for Cameron Smith. But what wonderful work by Billy Slater. Look at this. He gets to it. It's OK if he retrieves it, knocks it back. And this, I'm afraid, is try time. 
He's had a quiet game as uh, far as I'm concerned, Cameron Smith, but he could have come up with the most crucial four points in this competition. That is absolutely unbelievable. If my memory serves me correctly, it was English for Mark Gasnier in the centenary test, and we've seen Billy Slater come up with a similar piece of skill. This is phenomenal. It's that difficult to do. Chase a kick, it bounces up, tap it back without touching the going on the line. It's phenomenal. And the finish was great by Cameron Smith as well. It was Cameron Smith. He missed his first oh, test in three years in Paris last week. He put in 40 tackles oh, against England at Wigan two weeks ago. The Melbourne Storm skipper and he has probably just helped to win the Four Nations here at Ellen Road. It was a beautiful kick by Lockyer, and you must say, Mr Slater will be so happy. Remember the wild pass that he threw in the World Cup final that virtually sealed it for New Zealand to take that trophy. And he come under a lot of pressure, a lot of stick, but he has repaid Australia very much indeed. Surely this is only an easy kick for this man. And it is, Terry. There's a word, uh, Eddie, honesty. That is all that try was. It's about pushing up and not giving up, chasing to the last step, patting it back, knowing that one of your teammates is going to be there. Now, a big thing that's really hurting England at this present time is the big yardage that this, the referee's taking about. He's taking about 12, 13 metres. If he's going to take you back that far, you've got to make sure you slow down that rock and take the yardage away from the Australians. That's Australia's fifth try in this game. Okay, Three of them have come on the last tackle edit. Great demonstration of how to look so dangerous on the last play. Sometimes it's been passing, sometimes it's been kicking. But being so clinical on the last tackle is the reason why the 12 points are ahead. That wasn't the best kickoff from England. It was a short kickoff, but I don't know whether anyone was reading the script apart from Greg Inglis. Anyway, let's go down to Bill. I think he's got news of Michael Shenton, Bill. Yeah, encouraging news of Shenton. He uh, was knocked out cold, as we saw, but he has come round in the, the England dressing room. He's sitting up, he's communicating uh, with the medical team, and uh, they're a lot uh, happier about his, his state. He was really was clean out on that field. Well, I hope this isn't the signal for Australia to uh, display their full box of tricks, because this English effort, it does not deserve to be a 20 or 30 point shellacking here. It's well, been a real contest, yeah, but the but Australians are in the mood. They've got 12 points oh, to play Oh, what around. a ball! Billy Slater, that's the try, second try for Billy Slater, and that's the Four Nations heading to Australia. Well, Baron Lockyer instrumental here again. And Billy Slater backing up like every fullback should do. Have England clocked off, a bit of lazy defending on the fringe. You're going to get exposed by these players. Well, with a 12-point lead, we always knew that they were going to start keeping this ball alive, and it has worked out exactly that way. Slater, the creator of the try, a few moments ago for Cameron Smith. Great work, good offload. Was it a slight hint of a forward pass either way? The referee in a good position. And Mr Slater is surely wiping off the debt in regards to that silly pass in the World Cup final. He will be a very, very happy man. And the power of the green and golds once again has come to the fore. First and adds the extras, that was academic. 34-16, Terry, they don't deserve this, England. Eddie, just looking at what the England camera doing here, and you look for that inspiration, I was saying it before, and Jamie Peacock was giving his teammates a right big serve in there. You can't let the Australians play the ball so quick, have so many options. If you do, they will absolutely kill you. Look for a real big set here. There's the short start for the English. Yes, but again, it comes up in the possession of the green and golds. And that's a grapple tackle by Wilkin. Gallant's been strong for them all night. Gallant's had a very, very good game for the Australians tonight. Well, there was a doubt about the forwards. They said that uh, the English pack would take him apart, but Tim Sheens has worked very hard this week. He said that he has not been too comfortable with the effort that's been shown by the forwards, but they really have stood up tonight. Cameron Smith, Thurston, they're full of running now. The Australians absolutely full of it. Nine minutes to go, last tackle here for Australia. It's with Lockyer. 
Okay. All along the deck, asking Peter Fox to run it back. Hayne is after them, after him rather. And Briscoe bravely takes it forward. He's clattered by Billy Slater, who has a word in his ear. Here's Fox again. England, I'm afraid, are running in bags of cement now. They've given their all. Yeah, and I suppose that Tony Smith will be looking at the videotapes later and saying that uh, perhaps their kicking game was not as good as what okay. uh, it was shown against New Zealand. Remember, they absolutely peppered New Zealand with high kicks, high bombs. We haven't seen any of that tonight. Crabtree. On the last, they've uh, only made 29 metres, this set of six. Eastman, little dink over the top, but too far forward, looking for Tompkins, gobbled up by Lockyer. And here comes Gidley now. The Australian captain has been around far too long. This is his 50th cap for the green and goals, and he knew anticipation. He reads the game so well. Remember, the great star made his name as a full-back, and then he moved up to the standoff position. Here's Kurt Gidley again. And it's very rare you can say to a man that's still playing that you will have to classify him as a legend. And that's the nomination I would give to Darren Lockett. He has been an absolutely wonderful servant, not only for his country, but for the game of rugby league in general. Thurston, back it comes to that man Lockyer. There's the kick in behind the defence. There's a try for Jared Hayne. It's, a, it's, it's disappointing if you're looking at it from an English point of view, but from a neutral's point of view, it's a joy to watch them execute their plays. No, I'm sorry, I'm sick of it. OK. I'm sick of seeing it year after year, time after time. I really am. Right, but from a neutral's point of view, watching these players execute those plays and kick like that and finish the ground the try like that, it's a joy to watch. Brilliant. You're absolutely right. If you want to watch rugby league from the top of the tree, the highest echelon, you watch it year after year in green and gold it's it called it's called control and that's what the green and golds are doing Lockie knew exactly what was happening he knew that a tired defense out wide in this on, case it was peter fox see how it just looked he reads the game ever so well you will not see players steve in either code in this month to execute plays like that in either code these these players are as good as it gets couldn't agree with you more brian but We've seen it time after time, year after year. But disappointing from an English point of view, no doubt. I've been on the receiving end of it when they're when they're yes. when they're red hot and, the, and look, we expect, they're a different level. We expected so much tonight, and uh, it looked as though we were in with the fight for quite a long time. Five tries in the last 20 minutes it says and, it all, and that shows you the power and the strength and the fitness levels. First turn, can he add the extras? Yes, he can. What about the hook on that? It's just how good they are. They believe in everything that they do. Darren Lockyer, if you watch the way he plays the game, he backs himself every time he has the ball in hand. He knows that if he takes it to the line, he pulls up the outside backs. As soon as he does that, he can put in the neat little kick, and that's where the Australians will score the try. Well, come on, okay, we've got to switch on. Australia have it. No, they don't. England have it back from the short kickoff this time. Third time lucky. Just been shown a. A couple of pieces of paper. Uh, Greg Inglis has been deemed man of the series in this uh, Four Nations, and man of the match tonight is Jonathan Thurston. And justified, justified. Greg Inglis, it's been a joy to watch him over these past few weeks. He's the best three quarter in the world, as far as I'm concerned, as well. And, and to be fair, Thurston has dug deep, he's been creative. Nice little kick from Eastman, but just too far away from Peter Fox. There's the game. There's the execution. The two different teams try the same thing, and that's the difference of the teams at the moment. And also the fact that now they are trying things when it's just hopeless. The scoreline has got away from them. I they don't the... deserve that scoreline, though, no, Steve. I know you're right. It's but probably, at the end of the day, a fair reflection, but yes. they don't deserve it. No, you're right. The effort that the English guys have put in, but there was a time when you said, and I kept saying it, it's when we should ask the question. Someone should do something different, and we didn't. Did Australia? Yes, they did. And that's the reason why the score is as it is. Well, Bridge and uh, Burgess keep it going right to the end. I mean, 
if we feel Two. deflated, I just wonder what the players feel hold, like because hold, hold, they put their bodies hold. on the line year after year, don't they? And uh, the result, sadly, never seems to change. Well, you're right because, you know, we've, we've, we've waited 37 years, haven't we? And we thought tonight could have been it. And it oh. looked like it, but look at there, they've got the break again. It's Gidley, and again, a kick at speed, looking for Billy Slater, finding Billy Slater, Patrick for Billy Slater. And just look at the joy on the faces of the Australian players. That's a brilliant kick. A brilliant, and he didn't and have a to kick. wonderful chase. And I don't think he had to kick. I think that's the confidence, and that shows the confidence and the execution of the plays. Again, look, if you're going to get anything out of this last 15 minutes, just enjoy what the Australians are doing. It's disappointing from an English point of view, but enjoy what you're watching. And not only that, it's to exorcise the demons that must have been going through this man's mind when New Zealand were trading round that ground in Brisbane with the World Cup trophy. He has been magnificent. Well, he got three tries against us in Melbourne. Look how cool Gidley was. Year. He knew exactly there was someone there. It wasn't the best bounce. Contrast by that kick, Steve, with the kick that we've just seen in the corner from England. You know, we've still got a long way to go. Sadly, we thought we'd made up. But you've got to start looking at the positives. We're building for the two, 2013. Yes, here, here who, to that. Who would have thought that Tony Smith would have thrown in two youngsters in Tompkins and Eastman? OK, it was always going to be a big ass. They've done their bit, but quality and class has come to the fore. Well, these English players are absolutely shell-shocked. Looking at the bench, they're shell-shocked. The fans are shell-shocked. But you've got to say about this Australian side, winning is a habit. They have no idea how to lose and why they are so good for 80 minutes, they keep punishing you. No matter how much pressure you put on them, they will just keep lapping it up, lapping it up, and then they'll come up with the goods at the end of the game. Backwards, backwards. England have got the ball back from the kickoff again. 46-16, two minutes to go. There's a couple of players there, Eddie, you, you really feel for, and that's Adrian Morley and Jamie Peacock, two guys that have battled for so long. You don't know whether they'll be there in 2013. Maybe they will be, but, I mean, they're the other players. The other guys, a lot of the other guys in the field will get a chance, but these fellas lead from the front. They charge it up. They're, they're players the Australians fear, and we might not see them get so close to an Australian team again. And here's Morley once more. Morley and Peacock carrying the battle forward. Nobody has uh, put their hand up higher than those two. Here's Tompkins. Can you just give us something to, to take home with us and uh, think about through the winter before well, next year's Super League starts? Oh, look at that. Took it well, didn't it? But the point is, Eddie, is that the likes of Sam Tompkins, Kyle Eastman, and Richie Myler, is that the message is out. If you're going to be good enough, you'll get the opportunity. And we have to think positive. Yes, it's a cruel game. But when you play against quality and class, like we've witnessed in the second half, it's hard to stop. Thurston again with the kick. Oh, and it nearly came off. Uh, Lockyer. Nah, down here. Well, he'll be as disappointed as anybody. Tremendous performance last week. Named the international loose forward of the year this week. Kevin Sinfield. Um, Sam Tide is just uh, having the bandages taken off. He's uh, he's run his course for this year. And uh, 20 seconds away from the end of the 2009 season. Lockyer still wants to score. He still wants to score, Lockyer. He wants to sign off from his seventh kangaroo tour with a try. Well, I think he doesn't want England to score. That's what they want. No more tries. It's a high hanging kick. It's a bit easy. One play the ball for Australia, perhaps. 80 metre try. Well, Lockyer was after it. Oh, well done, Ryan Hall, one on one. brings to an end the 2009 season and Darren Lockyer on his 50th test cap his seventh kangaroo tour I saw him before the match marching off the field after warming up and I said to Sean McRae and Brian Carney in the studio is that the face of a man 
who looks like he's going to lose on his 50th appearance for his country. And the answer emphatically at the end of 80 minutes is no. You're right, Steve-O, he's a legend, a living legend. Certainly is, and one wonders now whether this may be the opportunity. 50 tests for Australia. He will stand up shortly and lift the Four Nations trophy, and will he call it a day at international level? Six tries from the 53rd minute for Australia after England had taken the lead through the Sam Burgess second try 10 minutes into the second half. They led 16-14. It was a real contest. But then Slater's hat-trick, Brett Morris, Cameron Smith and Jared Hayne, they well and truly put England to bed.